So today I'm going to uh, <coughs> have a tutorial on how to program and control these LED uh, strips or chains. Um, these are just generic LEDs driven using uh, the chips and um, I'm going to be using an Arduino and the shift out function within Arduino or the shift out process whatever you want to call it to uh, drive these chains. So uh, first off let me just uh, show you these chains. So these are individual pixels so uh, oh no focus there we go so I've wired some towels onto these and these basically uh, each one of these is its uh, own little pixel or its own LED so there's uh, an LED or just a white LED these are 50-50 SMD LEDs and then each one comes with its own uh, WS2801 um, driver chip so these chips receive serial commands or serial data over two of, uh, two of the inputs so you've got a ground 5 volt and then two data lines or a data line and a clock line and then um, that chip basically nibbles away at that data uh, takes the, the data for this LED and then passes the rest of the LED on to the next one which then takes away its data and then so on and so forth so um, yeah these are pretty pretty versatile I've just got a bit of a foam mounting board with four chains of them on because um, I've been working on a project of how to drive four chains independently um, without looping the, the signal through all of them so originally these chains can go on for like ever um, obviously that's not always a great idea so you can only really run the data lines maybe five meters at a push and um, what happens is it goes along one chain and it gets to the end and then what you'd have to do is loop the data back and into the next one and then like snake it through all of the chains which is okay if you're doing something that's in a long line but the stuff I'm doing isn't so uh, I needed to work on a different way of uh, controlling them so uh, first thing is I'm just going to quickly explain how I uh, hook up my data lines and power lines to the Arduino and then we'll look at the code so to hook these up these require uh, four connectors so you've got a, a ground and a 5 volt which I'm just taking off the, the ground and the 5 volt pins and then uh, we need two more lines so these two over here I'm just picking two uh, outputs or input outputs um, avoid 0 and 1 because they'll, they're for use for serial and in my future projects I'm going to be using those for um, uh, receiving DMX so uh, I'm going to avoid using those but I'll show you in the code you can pick any and then you can soft patch if you really want to um, and I'm just sending them out to a breadboard um, and then plugging these into breadboard because there's lots of wires from my four chains and um, I don't want to use all of them at the same time so there's uh, there's four lines so you've got five volt ground on on these uh, strings so they just go to your five volt on ground and then there's a uh, uh, a serial data or SD and then a clock or CK. Uh, I'm just going to take two of these pins and I'm choosing pin 2 to be the clock pin. Uh, so my pin 2 is my green one. So pin 2 is clock pin. Uh, and then I'm going to choose pin 3 of the Arduino to be my data pin. And then uh, I'm just going to hook up the ground and then the 5 volt. Do your 5 volt last. Um, and if I, let's get the right one on the breadboard and that, that's uh, that's running my little chase program so um, that's how you hook them up and then if you wanted to you can also hook them up in parallel so you can take another chain and then just literally piggyback these four off of those four and then both chains will display the same output of each LED so uh, let's have a look at the code so uh, I've decided to rewrite this code for you so you can follow it along. Um, I'm sorry I'm videoing the screen, I'm working on someone else's computer and I don't really want to install a screen capture software. So uh, I'm just going to video me writing this sketch out and then hopefully that will explain how it all works. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an array. And this array, or we're going to create three arrays. And these, these arrays will hold the output values for each LED. 
So each LED can have an output value of between 0 and 255, which is it's a, a, a byte of data. Um, and there's three LEDs within each LED, so you've got a red, a green, and a blue. So we're going to create an array um, for reds, and a, a, an array for greens, and an array for blues. It's not necessarily the best way of doing it, but it works. So uh, let's create some arrays. Uh, excuse my spelling if I... Uh, misspell anything. So these arrays are going to be integer, so we're going to create one for red uh, and you need to tell it how big it's going to be. Um, so I'm using chains of 8, so we're going to use an array of size 8. Uh, so it's int red and then square brackets 8 and we're going to do one for red, one for um, green and one for blue. And I'm just using capitals because I want to. Um, next thing we need to know is we're going to define our output pins for our data. So, uh, so we'll call it a pin map. Um, we're going to define a clock pin, uh, and we'll, I think that's that's two for me. Uh, yeah, and we're going to define a data pin, um, and that's three for me. So this is where I was saying about you can soft patch. You could choose any pins um, providing you can map the inputs and outputs to them. So it's pretty generic for Arduino. Or, um, okay, uh, and now we need to do some setup. So the setup part of the code um, runs first of all on the Arduino before anything else. So let's avoid setup. Uh, brackets and then squiggly brackets for our uh, actual code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, set our pins to be outputs. So that's pin mode with a capital M. Um, we'll go for clock pin uh, and that is going to be an output. Uh, output needs to be out. Uh, let's get this spelled right. Output needs to be in uppercase uh, and then we're going to do pin mode, capital M, and then the data pin. Uh, that's going to be an output as well. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to initialize our arrays. So we're going to stick a zero in everything. Um, and basically this means that you've got a blank output to start with, uh, and then you can code from that. So we're going to do that using a for loop. So for, and then I'm going to use dummy integer i um, from zero. And then we're going to go from i less than 8, because 8 is our most. Oh, these are all 0 indexed as well. I should have mentioned that. So 0 is the first one. And then 7 would be our 8th one. So that's a computer programming construct. It doesn't really make any difference, but 0 is the first LED. Uh, so we're going to go from i to less than 8. So 7 will be our, our finishing value. Uh, and then we're going to increment i, so i++, plus plus, uh, every time the loop goes around. Um, and then squiggly brackets for our for loop. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set red of pin, um, set red array value for i, we're going to set that to equal to zero. Uh, and basically what happens is, as it goes around the loop, so i will equal zero to start with, and then one, and then two, and then three, up to seven. So red of what of zero will be zero, so it will set our first LED to zero. And then on the second time around the loop, it will set our second LED, which has index one to zero, and then up to our seventh value or our eighth LED, and it will just set them all to zero. So we're going to do that for the red, the blue, uh, and red, blue, and green. And we're just going to set them literally all to zero. Uh, and then we've got a blank canvas to start with. So is that all? Yep, it's all on the all on the camera. Okay, cool. Um, the next thing we are going to do is uh, we're going to set up an output uh, function or variable. Um, and basically, all this is going to do is every time we call it, it's going to push all the data out to the LEDs. So um, we're going to call this one. Uh, so you start this with a void. Um, and then we're going to call it update string, so update string, uh, and then some normal brackets, and then our squiggly brackets to, for our code. And then what we're going to do is we're going to 
push out the data for each LED. So I'm going to use a for loop again. So for int, and then we're going to use the dummy variable i. So i equals zero, and then we're going to go uh, for i less than eight. So we're going from zero to seven again, and then we want to go i plus plus to increment it. And then we want our code, which will be in here. Do, do, do. And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to use um, a library function or a function library, whatever you want to call it, within Arduino called shift out. And this basically pushes the uh, a byte of data out over a serial interface. So you need, and it only works if you have a data pin and a clock pin and you've got a byte of data. If you want to do anything slightly different, you, you have to use a different set of functions or write your own or, or anything like that. So we're going to use this and it does work. So going to call it shift uh, or no we're going to use it shift out with a capital O and then you need to tell it your data pin um, so we've defined our data pin up top um, your clock pin so again we've defined our clock pin so we're just going to use that and then you need to tell it whether you're doing most significant bit or least significant bit first um, so these driver chips require most significant bit first so that's MSB FIRST um, and you have to tell it this, otherwise it, it will do it one way or the other, I can't remember which way. And then you need to tell it what data, or what bytes of data you want to send. So, my LEDs are configured that they require the blue byte data, of uh, the blue byte of data first, then the green byte of data, and then the red byte of data. So we're going to send it the blue byte of data first, so, blue of I, oh, capital blue, sorry blue of I and then we're going to finish our shift out for that one so these LEDs require or the driver chips require blue then green then red so what we're going to do is we're going to copy that and so blue and then we're going to change it so it's blue then green and then red and basically what happens here is this this for loop will go from from your first LED up to your last LED, so from zero to seven because we're zero indexed, and it will just read the data out of the array that we've created. So, and then because we we've, we've only put eight um, elements in the array, it's just going to find those eight elements and it's just going to output that data um, to our LEDs from each from each one. So blue, then green, then red, and then it will go on to the second LED and then blue, then green, then red, and uh, that's how it will work. So great. Now we've we've initialized all of our data, we've done our setup routine, we've um, created a function that will update the string uh, whenever we call it, um, and that's quite important that it doesn't continually update our strings, and that will become more evident in one of my next videos on DMX um, and how that's going to work, because you can't receive DMX and be updating serial data at the same time, because you your processor, the Arduino just isn't powerful enough. Um, but anyway, so now we're going to write our code which actually makes them look nice or actually does something. So this is our, our void loop, which is uh, the main piece of code for the Arduino. So this is the piece that runs all of the time. Um, <coughs> and this is where you can get a bit creative. So I'm going to write just a basic, basic for loop. Uh, I'm just going to use the dummy variable i again, so for i equals zero. Um, and then for i less than 8, um, and then i++, plus plus. and so I'm just going to tell it to turn each of the LEDs onto white, and then update the string, and then turn it off, and then we'll move on and set the next LED. So uh, I'm going to tell it to go the red of LED i, so we're going to change the LED, uh, each time we go past it, and we're going to set that to the full value, so 255. Um, so red and then green of i uh, equals 255, and then red, green, and blue of i equals 255. Um, so that sets it to white or a whitish color and not exactly white. Um, that's another video for somewhat in the future. Um, so we've updated our array, but that hasn't actually updated our LEDs. So the reason we've got an array is that's stored in memory, we can change that, we can do interesting things to that. Um, so we're just gonna update the array 
first, and then we're going to call our function that we just made, which was update string. And basically, whenever you call the update string within the Arduino code, it's going to look for this function up here that we've just written, and it's going to sorry, it's just going to process that code, which is going to output our data. Um, anyway, back to our loop. If we just left this loop like this, it would set the first LED in the array to white, it would then update the string, then it would go back and look at the second LED in the, ch in the array, or the, the data for the second LED, which is stored in the array, and it would set that to white. But it hasn't actually changed the first LED from white to something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to, after outputting that data, we're actually going to set them all back to zero. So I'm just going to copy this line of code and put it here, but I'm going to change the 255s to, to zero. Um, like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to also add a delay between processing this code and processing this code again. So just a delay of 300, so that's um, about a third of a second. Um, and basically what's going to happen now is it's going to turn on the first LED, then it's going to update well, it's going to put the data in the array, update the string, which reads from the array and p p processes it out to the string. Then we're going to reset the array back to zero for that LED. Then we're going to wait, and then we're going to do the whole thing again for the second LED, and then up to the last LED, and then back to the first LED, etc., etc. So this is the um, the program that I had running at the beginning, um, and it just literally goes from one to eight along the uh, the LEDs. It's pretty, pretty boring. So this is where you'd write your interesting code if you want something a bit more interesting. So let's just say that we want something a little bit more interesting. So each time we set one to white, maybe we don't want to turn it off. Maybe we want them to fade out gradually. So what we could do is we could say every time you update one, after you've updated the string, we're going to write the data in that array to half, maybe, of that, what it should be, or half of full brightness, so one, two, eight, rather than zero. Um, yeah, you could do that, uh, and that would basically turn them, so as it goes past, it would turn them back down to half brightness, and then the, the one that it was currently on would be on full brightness. Um, yeah. There's lots of interesting things you could do here. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it like that for now. And uh, So that's how you can basically write data out to these strings. Um, so my next video is going to be on, on DMX and how we can receive data from DMX. And then in here we'll receive the data and then we're going to push that data that we've received. And we're going to push that data out to these strings. Um, so yeah, subscribe if you want to see that or you want the updates. Um, I'll stick some links down the bottom to this code, some more code for driving multiple strings. Um, and I think I'll link in the data sheets as well. The data sheets for the WS2801 uh, drivers go into a bit more detail about how they want the data to be sent to them. Um, so a bit about the serial structure uh, and it makes quite an interesting read. It's worth reading because then you'd understand, or if you don't already understand, you can understand how this, this shift out actually works. So how it processes the data and how it pushes it out to the string and how that string actually then receives that data, processes it and passes it on to the next one in the chain. So I'll link all that in, but yeah, subscribe for my next video and um, yeah, I'll post all this code up for you.